Hello, my name is Danny Brzezik, and I am presenting Group 3 Stance that Gun Control Does Not Work. Benjamin Franklin once said, Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty or safety. Not only do we agree with Mr. Franklin that we should not sacrifice liberty for safety, we aim to show that gun control laws do not actually make us safer. New gun laws almost always target the wrong people, law-abiding gun owners. According to John Lott Jr., concealed handgun permit holders are extremely law-abiding. In Florida and Texas, permit holders are convicted of firearms-related violations at one-twelfth the rate at which police officers are convicted. By definition, the people who would follow any new gun laws or restrictions would be law-abiding citizens. Criminals already ignore and violate standing laws. Murder is already illegal. Assaults illegal. These existing laws are not a deterrent to violent criminals, so why would any new laws be different? Proposed gun control laws address statistical outliers. The majority of proposed laws focus on banning assault rifles. Year after year, according to the FBI Unified Crime Report, rifles of all types, not just assault rifles, are responsible for less murders than personal weapons, which include hands, feet, and fists, blunt objects such as clubs and hammers, or knives. Other proposed laws focus on the point of sale of firearms. A study conducted by the Department of Justice's Bureau of Justice Statistics found that less than 2% of violent offenders who were surveyed had obtained their firearm from a retail source. More than half, on the other hand, had either stolen it, found it at the scene of their crime, or obtained it off the street or from an underground market. As the war on drugs has shown us, it has all been impossible to stop underground or black markets from functioning. Another factor in the consideration of firearm restrictions or bans are defensive uses of firearms. Several studies have confirmed that defensive gun uses are prevalent. The majority of surveys indicated that there are at least 1 million annual defensive gun uses in the United States. Tim Sal wrote in October of last year, two recent studies lend strong confirmation to the idea that defensive gun uses vastly outnumber criminal uses with one finding that there is 1.67 million defensive gun uses each year. So a question we often hear is, who stops a bad guy with a gun? Luckily for us, a couple of folks from the New York Times decided to help us answer that question. They determined that in over half of the active shooting attacks they reviewed, the attacks ended before the police arrived. Of those attacks, 64 were stopped by a bystander either subduing or shooting the attacker. An additional 72 ended with the attacker committing suicide. As I have mentioned in some of the class, previous class discussions, I am a law enforcement officer. I know through my training that active shooters will often commit suicide after meeting their first opposition. Knowing this, it is safe to assume that some number of these suicides were caused by bystander intervention. On a personal note, I was one of the first responding officers to the active killer incident at Greenwood Park Mall here in Indiana. In this case, a legally armed shopper intervened with his firearm, killing the attacker and stopping the bloodshed in just 15 seconds. The first responding police officer took three minutes to arrive at the mall. How much worse could things have been if the shooter was able to continue for another two minutes and 45 seconds? The other members of Group 3 and I thank you for your attention and we look forward to continued civil discourse on the topic of firearms in America. Thank you.